All right. All right. Welcome to Clerical Errors. Clerical Errors. Clerical Errors. Welcome to Clerical Errors. I'm Vicar Baldwin. I'm Vicar Baldwin. Welcome to Clerical Errors. Welcome to Clerical Errors. I'm Pastor Baldwin someday. Hey. <clears throat> clerical Errors. Yes. Welcome to Clerical Errors, where we discuss errors. Vicar, <clears throat> what are you doing? Oh, hey, hey Pastor. Um, are you, you, you know, recording? What's going on? I didn't think so. Are, are these on? They're on. Oh. <laughs> All right, Peter, play the intro. <clears throat> Recorded live at Toxin Tasting Studios, it's the Clerical Errors Podcast. The podcast that shows you what's behind the collar. Let's go. Welcome to Clerical Errors, the podcast. I'm Bullhagen. And I'm Vicar Baldwin. If you're uh, noticing that uh, no Berg today, um, he's not with us today. Uh, you're in our thoughts, Berg, and uh, please know that uh, we'll keep the, the seat warm for you when you're, you're ready to come back, so... Um, it's going to be, uh, the show's not going to be as good today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> so, uh, so we will not have quite the, the in-depth, uh, that we normally have, but, uh, we will carry on. That's right. The show must go on. And, uh, so, uh, what do we have in today, Vicar? Vicar brought the beverage. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, I went down to the, the store and I was like, Hey, this beer has space aliens on it. And I was like, space aliens are cool. So I will get this. This is a Zoltan Session IPA from Exile Brewing. So, here we go. There you go. Yeah, that has an alien on it, Vicar. Yeah, and he's on a beach, and beaches are warm, you know, and sunny. Yeah, I've noticed that some of these craft beers, that the younger people, they're more attracted to the label than they are the actual beer. Well, you know, I couldn't even tell you what Session means in IP, like Session IPA, I don't know what that is. Is that like recording session? Because it'd be kind of appropriate. Oh, it's actually a uh, a reference to Jeff Sessions. Oh, hey, I did not know that a reference to Jeff Sessions. <laughs> Who's that? That is Peter, our producer. He got himself a microphone. Hey, hey, welcome to the show, Peter. Now you're not some uh, just voice in our ears uh, uh, that people can hear who you are as well. You can be voice in their ears too. I'll, I'll try and keep out of your hairs for the most part, but, uh, you know, someone's got to pick up the slack with uh, Pastor Berg gone and <laughs> <sighs> poor Vicar uh, filling in there. So Yeah, it, it, how many podcasts rely on an app? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, Vicar, what are you preaching on? Well, I get a fill-in at a, another church this coming Sunday, and it's on um, John 21, where the third appearance of Jesus to his disciples, where they're out uh, by the Sea of Tiberias. And it starts off, um, they're just sort of, you get the feeling they're sitting around and Peter's finally like, let's go fishing. So they all go fishing, but they don't catch anything. And so just as the day's breaking, their fishing's getting done, um, Jesus appears on the shore and, and they don't know it's him, but he's like, hey, you guys don't have any fish, do you? And they're like, no, we sure don't. He's like, try again on the right side. So they throw the net and gather, it's another miraculous catch of fish and you know, they know all of a sudden that Jesus is there. And, and that just that moment, you know, Peter jumps overboard and they come hauling the fish back in. And they're just, they're so thrilled to be in the presence of Jesus again. Would you get to the point? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> just like my sermons. <laughs> Poor guys. Come on. Uh, but no, you know, <laughs> so here we are, <laughs> right? It's, <laughs> it's two weeks after Easter, right? And so the excitement's kind of worn away. And, and even just on a weekly basis, you know, you leave church feeling filled and refreshed. And, and then as the week drags on, well, what now? Where's Jesus, right? Is this really the world where he conquered death and sin, right? When it, they still, you know, have all these day-to-day problems. But, you know, in this, um, in this pericope, we see Jesus both, you know, watching over his disciples, even though when they don't hey, know hey, Vicar, what's a pericope? A pericope. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> it's something that usually gets changed to periscope when you're typing out papers. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a section of scripture selected for a reading or something. Okay. So the, the are, selected are you, reading. Are you typing out papers on your iPad? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, <laughs> my phone autocorrect. <laughs> no, he's Googling for what his next paper is going to be. That's right. That's right. I started looking at my classes. But so anyway, right? So this is Jesus providing for um, his disciples, watching over them, um, both, you know, materially in, in getting their daily bread, all the 153 fish, right? But especially um, they are still in the presence of Jesus, right? He's still with them. Um, 
and he's still with us today, you know, forgiving our sins. We actually get to be in the presence of that same Jesus who stood on the shore around that, you know, charcoal fire as, you know, that's the same Jesus who's on the altar when we go to the Lord's Supper. We get to be in his presence just like the disciples were. All right. Well, I kind of knew what you were preaching on because I kind of have to prove your sermons. <laughs> but the audience doesn't know. <laughs> That's right. And uh, because we have people listening, I chose to be a little more gentle with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Plus the red ink. You can't really read that into you know, the audio here. And I am preaching on here because we're on the one year and where you're preaching, you're filling in for pastor is on the three year. We have uh, Good Shepherd Sunday here. So uh, uh, simply talking about how Jesus is our good shepherd, how he lays down his life for the sheep and, uh, and how he gather us, gathers us together around his word and how he not only as our, as our shepherd also, he, uh, he's among us and he calls us by name. And if you really think about it, a lot of people wonder who, who is it that really cares for me? Who is it I can, that I can trust? You know, if you remember who was the one that already was willing to die for you, certainly you can trust him. And then ultimately the shepherd does give us eternal life. And so Jesus being the good shepherd, it's a pretty easy one to preach because the, the gospel is right there and the law is right there. You know, we're sheep yeah. and we need a shepherd. Without the shepherd, we're lost. And, and he came and laid down his life for the sheep. So uh, grab your beverage and uh, join us on this journey. Um, and, uh, and let's begin with the top 12. Vicar, would you like to say it? Oh, Peter, right. pay the intro. Peter, Enough nonsense. It's time for Bullhagen's Top 12. All right, Vicar. Uh, one thing you probably noticed uh, is that uh, I've got my own set of life hacks. Mm, yeah, yeah. Right? The things that just let you be the most effective pastor. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, I have a certain way of doing things, and I've been doing this for over 20 years now. And I figure maybe I'll share some of my pastor hacks, I'll call them with you. Ooh, it's a very practical, application-based practical, yes, episode here. It, you know, it makes more sense with you than it would with Pastor Berg. So, uh, so uh, I've got uh, 12 pastor hacks. Pastor hacks, all right. Number 12. This one's called Roast and Rolls. Roast and Rolls. Okay, wh one thing that happens as a pastor is if you don't have, like, a dinner plan and you're tired and the family's tired and grumpy and you don't have any dinner plan, you wind up going to McDonald's. Mm, yeah, yeah. And uh, that won't work for you when you're out in the Shepherd of the Glacier Lutheran <laughs> Church. That's right. So uh, so I call this Roast and Rolls. You get a crock pot. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, beef, I generally throw it in the night before. Okay. Or if it's pork or chicken. I'd throw in the crock pot when I get up in the morning. And uh, rolls, you get those frozen rolls, the Rhodes brand frozen rolls. You put them on a pan mm -hmm. when you get up in the morning. When you get home, they're ready, all risen. You just throw them in the oven and you eat your meat. It's all set to go. So you, you, you kind of avoid the temptation. You've got a meal all ready. Nice. You can stay that in the freezer for, you know, months in advance. Nice. So uh, that is number 12. Number 11. Uh, this one I... I uh, I have to give credit to my father. This is one of his Ooh. that he, he taught me. And uh, I refer to him sometimes as the original O-T-O-G. <laughs> O-T-O-G. Old Testament O-G? Yeah. Okay. So he had what's called a right angle rule. So let's say uh, your office is a mess, if it ever is a mess. Mine's usually pristine. Oh, of course. Um, and you, you need to qu click quickly clean it for someone to come when someone comes in to visit with you. You just take everything that's on your desk and you make it into right angles and it looks more organized mm. it's all it looks like you know what you're doing and your desk is clean i suppose being a, a seminary professor too i mean he really got to put that rule to use all kinds of places that's right nice that's right number 10 all right one thing i always lose track of is my little tabs for my collar i know this is less helpful for you because you wear an anglican collar that, that's the one that kind of looks like a flea collar <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have any fleas, so it works, right? And uh, and I and I generally wear a Roman collar because I find those to be somewhat inhibiting, inhibiting with my neck. I'm not something I try to make a theological statement. I remember when I was in seminary, it seemed like uh, the more serious a guy was, the thicker and thicker his Anglican collar got. <laughs> it was kind of funny, anyways. And uh, and so uh, we every once in a while we still get these Lutheran prayer books, and I don't really put them out. Mm. But what things nice about it is their cardboard cover, mm -hmm. and uh, and the back page is blank. 
Mm, okay. So you, you just take that prayer book and then you, you slice off the, the outside edge of the back cover and boom, you have a tab <laughs> put in your collar. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. That brings us to... <laughs> You're right. You, yeah. You look zoned out. Uh, no. You're a little shell-shocked? <laughs> I still just, you know, I'm in the chair, man. This the is, chair. It's a little overwhelming. Don't get used to it. That's right. <laughs> yes. I feel like you should have your notebook out and you're uh, <laughs> writing these down. I, I have my pen. All right. That brings us to number nine. Number nine. Uh, this one's entitled uh, Free Pens. Free Pens. In our, in our town, one of the things we have is we have one of these bank tellers that's uh, off-site. So it's like a vil- video teller, you yeah. know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when you sign checks or, and that kind of thing, what do you need? You need, a, you need a pen. So they have a little little uh, cup with pens right there. Hey, cool. Driving around, oh, I need to grab a pen. I don't have a pen. <laughs> well... <laughs> You can't say that. I know where you can get a pen. Nice, nice. Now, what am I going to do at Shepherd of the Glacier Lutheran Church, though? Um, well, I'm sure they do banking there, too. <laughs> That's right. Um, I can't help you then. <laughs> You're on your own. Number eight. I like listening to music when writing sermons. Mm-hmm. And so this is what I do. They say it's an Easter sermon. I want a particular mood or uh, my sermon, like a joyful. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'll listen to joyful music. Okay. Right? Let's say the sermon needs to have more of a somber tone, like we just went through Holy Week. Mm-hmm. I'll listen to something more somber. Okay. And it, somehow it does affect how I think and, and, and write my sermons out. It actually makes a difference. In fact, there are times where I've asked my wife, um, can you tell what kind of music I was listening to when I wrote the sermon? Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. Number seven. Now, this one is a... Uh, this one is a... Uh, a pastor bullying in life hack. It may not be for everybody. Mm, okay. Okay. Right? But uh, so uh, let's say your bench press is lagging a little, a little bit. All right. Yeah. It, it's, uh, I, I have that problem all the time. It's not that. where you want it to be. <laughs> Definitely right? my problem. So in this life hack, what you do is this. All right. You, you get on the bench. You warm up. Get a good pump going. Mm-hmm. Then you put on a weight where you can comfortably do eight or nine reps. You with me? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And uh, for me, that's about. Maybe 245. Oh, I'm I'm probably not quite that, but you know. So, uh, and then uh, you do eight or nine reps, and then you wait 70 seconds, and then you do more. Mm -hmm. And you wait 70 seconds, and you keep doing them until you get 50 reps. Usually, it should take about 15 or 20 minutes. And if you do that for your bench workout, boom, your bench will get up there. You should submit that to one of those magazines or something, you know. You'd be a published, you know, muscle and fitness author. Are you trying to tell me that I need to find a different profession here, Vicar? <laughs> no, no, not at all, sir. <laughs> Number six. Now, I want you to think about this, okay? Okay. When you're a pastor, you have uh, people in the congregation mm-hmm. that you don't know very well. Mm-hmm. All right? Or you kind of want to know what's going on in their lives, right? Okay. Okay? Because, you know, it's helpful. Right, right. And, and you kind of want to know what people are thinking because it kind of helps you preach. Okay. And uh, you want to kind of get to know them when you, you, you need to help them in various issues. Mm-hmm. So here's my life hack, all right? You go and visit them. <laughs> wow. Well, I was, Are you I writing was, this down? I was waiting for something like involving the NSA and their Alexa, you know, in their house. But visiting? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You're thinking like Berg's, Berg's idea of putting Alexa on a Roomba. That, oh, that's pretty genius. No, but this they is probably it, have you know, what you do is, is you, you, you visit them. Wow. So, wow! Yeah, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, these are some and 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 by the way, the last four those these are going to be groundbreaking. Okay? Groundbreaking. Okay. Groundbreaking. This is going to blow your mind. Whoa! Um, actually, five there, but... is pretty groundbreaking too. Number five. This life hack. I want you to stay with me. Okay. This is entitled "Don't Do It." Don't <laughs> drugs? No. Well, if that's your thing. <laughs> okay. I want you, you can play along with this at home if you're if you're listening. Okay. Now I want you to I want you to think of something. All right, you with me? I want you to think of something that you've been thinking about doing, but you shouldn't. Okay? Okay. So, everybody have that? Okay. This is what you do. You don't do that. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> it'll, sa- it'll save you a lot, all right? So, there's something you, you really, you've been thinking about doing, but you kind of shouldn't, all right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just don't do it. Don't do it. Well, when you put it like that, I mean... Yeah, and sometimes it's helpful too if you say it out loud. Like, you know, sometimes you hear something on the news or someone, you know, my sister lives in Florida and she always sends me all sorts of stories 
about what's going on, you know. Uh-huh. Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't rob a Taco Bell wearing a diaper. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I- <laughs> if, if he would have taken the advice of just saying it out loud or just saying, okay, you know, I probably shouldn't wear a diaper and rob a Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. He wouldn't be. He would be like, oh, oh, you know, I probably should have done that. <laughs> and he'd probably, and, and see, if he had listened to the Clerical Heirs podcast, mm. and this is not just, you know, just pastoral advice or pastor. This is. Really, more advice for you from Uncle Carl. <laughs> you know, Perfect. your wise yeah. Uncle Carl that kind of gives you some uh, some advice. So, so once again, all right, there's something you're, you've been thinking about doing, but you know you really shouldn't, so y- you don't do it. You don't do it. Don't do it. All right. All right. You, you know, I think uh, I think if you're at a certain point when you're when you're robbing a Taco Bell with a diaper on, you're probably like five or six say it out louds deep, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, the first thing, well, you know, with a diaper, he, he could... You know, maybe he has some medical issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. it takes so much yeah. effort to get to the bathroom every time I have to use the bathroom. When what if you get nervous while you're robbing the Taco Bell, right? You can't run to the right. restroom with a gun. And, and you don't want to... the police thing. You yeah. Don't, you don't want to leave any DNA samples behind. <laughs> no. <laughs> so... Smooth criminal. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's number five. I mean, that that's a good one. That is. You that know, is. if more people did that, I think it would be helpful. Yeah. Number four. Uh, that brings us to number four. Now, these are groundbreaking, okay? To me, these will, and if you're, especially if you're a pastor, these will really open your eyes to something, okay? Now, I want you to really listen. This will make things so much easier, all right? So, number four. You know how there are so many songs and hymns out there? Yeah. yeah. Right? And, and it's a lot of work to, uh, you know, you want to make sure that the, the song or the hymn you want to sing proclaims uh, our Lord Jesus and it confesses a, the faith that we have, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and it's also hard to find, you know, songs that are edifying to the Christian and helpful, you know? And you have to, you have to go through all these hymns and songs that, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to do that. So, so this is my life hack. It's called Use a Hymnal. <laughs> <laughs> are you suggesting there might be collections of songs that s- someone has maybe no, no, thought of is, before? We use, we use a hymnal. It's called Lutheran Service Book. And what they've done is... They've gone through, and uh, they've picked out hymns that, you know, some are stronger than the others, admittedly. Yeah, yeah. But uh, generally, you can trust those hymns, and it, it just saves me so much time if you, you actually just uh, um, use, a, use a hymnal. Use a hymnal, yeah. No, I mean, it's groundbreaking. A lot of people don't realize this, <laughs> but just think of how much time it'll save you, Vicar. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You writing this down? Well, y- uh, yeah, somewhere here, yes. All right, you better. Let me a test later. Oh, man. Number three. Now, another thing that pastors take some time for some takes a lot of time is, uh, what am I going to preach on? Or or how am I going to find a text that really says that's time appropriate, what needs to be said? That, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that kind of, you know, you might have some blind spots in your own, you know, as you're picking out readings and, and deciding what to preach on. So this is my, uh, this is my, this is my life hack number three. Use a lectionary. Ooh. What a lectionary is, if you don't know, is a collection of readings throughout the year that follow the church year. And, and so it saves you time from having to pick readings out every Sunday. And, and it, it, it uh, opens your eyes and you, well, I know what to preach on. And uh, now I had a phone call with an angry caller um, that uh, from one of our earlier podcasts of arguing about one or three years. You know <laughs> who you are, listener. And uh, feel free to call me. We can talk more. I'm not... Saying, you know, use one or use three, you know, there's Christian freedom. I would just say, use one of them. I mean, think of all the time that would save. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to try to remember that, you know, where's where's the uh, where's the Easter story again, you know, when Easter rolls around? Right. Because it's right there. Right. And, and that also keeps you from forgetting Easter because, because you know, the lectionary says, oh, it's Easter. That's so. right. <laughs> That's a very valuable life hack. Number two. This one is equally as helpful as the others groundbreaking, a lot of the one that maybe a lot of people hadn't thought of before. Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. so imagine you're a pastor. Ooh, feels okay. nice. All right? And uh, it, it's you, you have to plan a service. All right? And you want to make sure that your service speaks what the Bible does. Okay, yeah, you know that sounds, me? that's important. Right? Yeah, yeah. You want a service that, that gives the people Christ. Mm-hmm. You with me? Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay. And you want a, 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 to kind of have, to build a worship service that uh, teaches the children. Okay, yeah. Right? And, and you want something that elderly people 
will remember when they start to lose their memory. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and you want to be faithful, and that's a lot of work to do every Sunday to put something like that together. It's a lot of things to remember. To you do. know, how yeah. do you do that and visit people when you're putting all that together? Not sleep, I guess. So here's my. Well, life. step one is to get a diaper. <laughs> yeah, that's right, and then some Taco Bell. <laughs> so that brings us to this one. Uh, it's it's called the liturgy. Ooh. Okay. Now now what this is. All right, you okay. with me? I'm, I'm trying. Okay, it's what it is, is it, it's actually in the hymnal. Well, wait, that place where there were, like, those songs mm -hmm. and people... Whoa. Yeah, and, and there are services in there mm -hmm. that actually are faithful to the Word of God. Hey, that's a bonus. They offer Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's something that actually teaches children and that help the elderly, elderly when they're... Uh, help them remember. Okay, yeah. And, and, uh, and if you use those, then you don't have to, like, reinvent the wheel every Sunday. It's the right... There, you don't suppose like there could be say more than one you know variation, so people wouldn't have to get bored of the same same exact thing every week, do you? I mean, well, yeah. Would it be possible to have more than one of those in a hymnal? There are, yeah, but you be regular though. Oh well, see, yeah, being regular is very important. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to leave any DNA evidence behind. <laughs> and number one. All right, this is gonna be the number one pastor. I better. I'm yes, gonna, you write this down. Okay, this is this is. Uh, this is going to really open your eyes and change everything for you, okay? All right. Okay. So imagine this. Y you want to teach the Christian faith in an organized way. Organized way. Yeah. So, so let's say um, uh, you, you want to teach what the Bible teaches. And, and I know you. You get, oh, there's this wonderful story, then this story, then this story, and then there's this part. And then you get to the part where people are killing each other. Yeah, this is amazing. And all these things. And like, well, how do I focus? What can I teach? How can I teach this? In a very organized way, okay? Okay, this life hack is called the catechism. <laughs> oh! Okay, what it does is, is it teaches the doctrines of the Bible in an organized way. In fact, it's something you can even do at home. Whoa! You teach your children. You're like, oh, what do I teach? How do I know? Uh. Because the catechism teaches what the Bible teaches. Are you suggesting they might not have to wait till confirmation to crack one of those open? Right, right. And, and, and there it is. It teaches the Christian faith. Whoa. In a very organized way. Mind blown. Now, now this is an advanced uh, life hack though, for pastors. And that is one thing I've done with a catechism, which is really helpful, is to help them learn, is every class I now begin by reading the whole catechism together. Mm, okay. Question yeah. and answer. The first time, it takes about 20 minutes or so. And then after a while, down to 15, and then... They know it so well when they're reading it and sometimes even walking around with them and, and sometimes they don't even need the book anymore. And then also once a week at home, have them sign a sheet. My mom or my dad, we, we read through this at home as well. And uh, before long, they actually know it and they start to think like the catechism thinks. It's pretty amazing. So that, you know, because that really is helpful, I found, that for, for teaching the catechism and letting them learn it and memorize it is just to, continually read it with them over and over again so so they not only can say it that one time but they actually over time internalize it and start to think uh, like the catechism thinks yeah exactly like it becomes just their train of thought right yeah so those are the the, the pastor hacks all 12 vicar you mind uh you mind showing me your notes notes show them to you why, why is this just a picture of a cat <laughs> oh, well, you know, cat. And then I was like, ism. I don't know how you draw that. Part of that, he's wearing a Calvin and Hobbes t-shirt. Well, yeah, man. Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> oh, you know, it's an election shirt, too, so. All right, this brings us to a brand new segment. What are we calling this, Vicar? Well, you know, I was like, this has got to be memorable. It's got to be, you know, good. Good and memorable. Mm -hmm. So, I was like. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you know whether it's either. <laughs> yeah. Right? I was like, hey. This should be, you know, things that every vicar should have because they just, you know, the vicars were just, they had their assignments, you know, given out mm -hmm. last week, right? And so I thought, hey, I'll help some guys out here, right? So, and this even has a neat acronym. So my list is super useful and important things that every vicar should have. Okay. Right? And the super useful and important things, that's like suit, right? Right. And if you're going to be, you know, a vicar wearing your clerical, you need a suit. So don't forget your suit, your super useful and important oh. things. Oh my! That took me. I was I was over there in my office for a little while thinking of that one. How many hours did it take you? Uh, <laughs> You'd rather not say. Well, you know. <laughs> suit. Suit. 
All right. That's right. Just think of my sermons, you know? <laughs> right. Right. Now, now, is this a, a, a suit you wear on your birthday? <laughs> Well, I'll leave that for you to decide based on the items of this suit. Huh? All right. All right. So we'll, uh, we'll start here. The first thing that every vicar needs, lots of books. Okay. Right? It's just important to have lots of books. I mean, the more books you have, the smarter you look. Now, now, do you have to read said book? <laughs> no. No. I mean, it, it's, it's nice if you do, right? The more the merrier. But, but really... You know, if, if someone walks in your office, they don't know how many of those books you've read. They just know that you've got a lot of books. Okay. So you must know what you're talking about. Oh. Right? And if they're like important sounding titles and things, or like there's matching ones, like Luther's works, you know, the more the merrier. So, so then for like your, your Facebook profile pic, you have like, you know, your collar and your serious face and all these books behind yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know? And plus, you'll look dumb if there's empty space on your bookshelf, right? All you're, right. you're wasting the gifts that you've been given. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm catching what you're throwing up there. Right, right. So there you go. First thing every vicar needs, just lots of books. Second thing, right? We're on the I. Yeah. Now, how is that S? Well, see, but it's, it's, they don't match like that. It's just these are the oh. super useful and important <laughs> things, right? So it's just they're useful. Uh, <laughs> I'm not in spelling. All right. Baby all steps. Right. Baby steps. <laughs> So the, the second thing you need is a messenger bag, right? Throw over your shoulder, right, for carrying all the important stuff that you need to carry with you when you're doing vicar stuff. Okay. Like visits, you know? Well, you know, here I've been doing this for 20 years. I don't have one of those. How have I survived as a, as a pastor without one of those? Well, you, uh, mm, What's it called again? A messenger bag, right? It's like, you know, the satchel thing with a, you know, strap. You throw it over your shoulder. If it's leather, uh, it looks extra, you know, bonus. You know, I'm beginning points. to dislike millennials <laughs> more and more as this list goes on. Well, you know. A messenger bag? A messenger bag. I think that's what they're uh, called. I don't know. Right? Just don't put too much stuff because then the strap gives out so, on you. So what do you put in this bag? Well, there's a couple of things. The Bible is always useful, right? Okay. Hey, by the way, one, one life hack I didn't mention. Okay. okay. Now, this is really cool. All right. You get a, a cover for your cell phone, your smartphone. That looks kind of like a book. You see this? Here, let me get mine out. Ooh, okay. Right? Yeah, kind of that, that sort of leather. Right, right. Look and right what now. you do is if you forget your Bible, it looks like you're reading from a Bible and you're just reading the Bible verse off of your cell phone. Ooh, that's smart. See, look at that. But that kind of goes against my first rule. Though, it, it, takes, it takes it from something that looks uh, superficial, mm, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then you put the case on it, it looks super official. So, wow. <laughs> Man. Sunday. I miss Berg. So- <laughs> yeah. We're sorry, listeners. Oh, man. All right. All right. So, Are we on the eye now? Well, so this is just the third thing, right? And it's something to go in that messenger bag, right? Okay. Every vicar needs a copy of the Pastoral Care Companion. Oh. I know how much you love that, right? Oh, yes. You know, mm-hmm. if in doubt, there's a section for it. In you mean the, you the almost don't even have to go to the seminary. You just uh, turn page. They probably only sell it to people at the sem because, yeah, otherwise that loophole just, you know, break the system. Okay. So, so uh, tell me more about this book. Right. So there's, you know, like a section on you're going to visit someone who's sick, right? That's in there. Okay. Sick and dying. That's a separate section, right? Okay. Someone who's just lonely. That's in there. There's, okay. There's probably like, I've forgotten my wife's anniversary. I'm going to be trouble when I get home. All right. I'll bet that's in there too. Okay. I should look just in case, but I got a little while. You know, so there's still time to forget. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, you just have to make sure that you turn to the right page. Yeah, yeah, that that would be important. Otherwise, you could get some really bizarre. Uh, right? Did you ever uh, accidentally read the wrong page to someone? Uh, not yet, not yet. But I do still have three months to go here, so you know, there okay. is time. Okay. So then, the next thing that every vicar. Okay, have, we're on the T. <laughs> I get this. This does kind of start with the T, right? Okay. So you want something. Mm-hmm. Right on your desk. I think I'm says, understanding. Okay. That says I'm both, you know, I'm a fun, relatable guy, you know, still a vicar, but then I'm also, you know, serious, religious, pious, you know, right. So what do you put on your desk? Well, let me let me guess. Okay. So uh, say it again. You gotta make. So you need something that's, you know, I'm kind of, I'm a, I'm fun, you know, I'm down to earth, relatable, relaxed, but I'm also, you know, pious and, you know, theologically sound. Okay. I'm gonna. My guess is. Uh, like uh, a Martin Luther mug. 
Ooh, pretty close. Pretty close. Okay. My, my guess was pretty similar. I was going to say like a, a Martin Luther sticker for his MacBook. Ooh, okay. Okay. It is a Luther thing, right? So for the 500th anniversary of the Reformation, Playmobil released yeah. these little toy Luthers. Okay. They look kind of like an oversized Lego version of Luther. Mm-hmm. So boom. And he's, he's holding a copy of the Bible. We're in period garb, right? So it's Luther, but, you know, fun. Okay. Um, from my point of view, mm-hmm. all right, because uh, at my age, you need reading glasses to see actually whether it's Luther or not. Uh huh. So I've often, I've seen that on your desk and I didn't equate it with Luther. I just said, thought maybe he just, instead of working on your sermon, which really kind of, you know, <laughs> even playing with toys. Uh, see, that's, how, that's how it came across to me. Yeah. That uh, when you were putting your Legos away <laughs> and, and you heard me coming down the hallway and you, to me, I'm glad you cleared this up for me. I thought maybe that you put all of the other Legos quickly in a drawer because you heard me coming and you forgot like that little, that little one with the goofy hair That's right. on your desk. But you're saying that, uh, no, it's actually like, uh, yeah, it's, it's intentional, you know, because, because the other one, you know, you mentioned Legos fits, right? And sorry for any of you St. Louis guys out there, bummer for you, but you can get a Lego version of Kramer Chapel. At the Fort Wayne Seminary. Okay. So, boom, right. you have that on your desk, too. It's All right. Legos, it's Kramer Chapel. I mean. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of like your list. I'm trying not to punch you right now. Well, but uh, good, because that would ruin my last thing here. Wait, but by the way, if you another thing that I've noticed Vickers do, that, that it kind of has the same effect. Uh-oh. Okay. Is, is they like to talk, because it makes them relatable, like everyday man. But they, they talk about what kind of tattoo they would get if they got a tattoo, but you know they'll never get it. And so it's just like, I think this would look really cool. And you see, so, so it's relatable, it's like some theological tattoo, but you know they're never going to get it, but they like to talk about it. Is that the same kind of effect that... Well, I am scared of needles, so yeah, I probably wouldn't get a tattoo. All right, All right we're on, uh, was it uh, I guess this would be suits. This is would it... be Suda? I don't know. Uh, an extra T on your suit? Yeah, sure. Okay. This doesn't start with the T. Maybe right? it's a three-piece suit. Hey, brilliant. All right. Anyway, every vicar, and this is something that takes practice, right? This is a life skills. You need a good, deep-in-thought face, mm. right? So, like, when people are walking by, you know, they just happen to glance in the vicar's office, see what he's doing, you know, that you're maybe kind of, you know, sort of looking kind of off into the corner, maybe nodding slowly, mm-hmm. right, right? It doesn't really matter. It's like those books, right? They're on your shelf, but you haven't read them, right? You might be thinking about, would you prefer McDonald's or Hardee's for dinner? Hmm. Well, it's, I did get feedback from one, one of your the visits from that you made. Of They said, well, you know, Vicar, he, he looked like he was kind of listening, but he really wasn't responding. Maybe he was having a stroke or something. You yeah. Know, you know? Is that, were you doing the well, same thing? Like I said, it takes practice, right? I, I still got three months to go, but... Uh, Okay, you like uh, like put like a pen on your chin, or you don't wear glasses, so you can't do the glasses thing where you kind of put the yeah. Uh, the I use selfies, right? You just take selfies, you know, to say, hmm, what looks the most, you know, profound? Is that okay. a good word for Vickers? Profound. Sure. So, you, so you practice this? Uh, you know, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a mirror in my office. So, so when I walk walk by and I see that look, you're actually is you are. What are you actually thinking about then, Vicar? Oh, you know, it, it, it Legos? depends. Le- Legos? Yeah, that's right. You know, where should little Luther go next, right? He, he's my buddy. Oh, this is not going well. So there you go, man. That's Those are the super useful and important things that every Vicar should have. All right. Don't forget your suit. All right. Well, uh, if there are any vis- uh, listeners still listening, uh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And uh, if, if there are any, uh, anyone who's considering ever going to the seminary, becoming a pastor, um, uh, I would like to refer to number five on my list. It's called "Don't Do It." <laughs> so, if you know, imagine you 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 want you're a vicar, okay, and uh, okay, you probably shouldn't do what vicar just said, <laughs> all right? And you're thinking about doing what vicar just said, all right? Here's my advice: don't <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> all right. Um, that brings us to. Impaired Concentration Bible Study. Peter, play the intro. Do you have impaired concentration? Then this is for you. It's the Impaired Concentration Bible Study. One verse, one verse only. Uh, I still like that music. Yes, yes. I still like that music. So, um, uh, we're taking a break from Obadiah because uh, 
um, uh, with, with kind of Berg's expertise. And so uh, I kind of gave Vicar an assignment. Um, and uh, what verse did I give you, Vicar? Right. It's, so it's John eleven thirty five. Okay. And so uh, one verse, one verse only. This is like the impaired, impaired concentration Bible study. All right. Would you like to read that verse for us? All right. Here we go. I'll try to get it all. So John eleven thirty five. Jesus uh-huh. wept. Right. So and with any good vicar, right, you go to the Greek. Right. And there you find out Jesus is the subject of that sentence. Mm-hmm. And that verb is that he wept. All right. Or even, you know, if you look it up in the dictionaries that he like shed tears silently. Okay. What, what tense is that? Uh, aorist. Aorist tense. So, you know, like one time thing. Okay. Right. So Jesus wept. Okay. Um, so uh, um, what, do we, what do we take home from this, Vicar? Well, um, I guess so Jesus, Jesus weeps. So he must, you know, um, he must be human, right? Because mm-hmm. he, he feels, right? And right. He feels uh, uh, compassion, right? Keep it going. Sadness. I don't want to lose any listeners. Right? Keep it going. <laughs> right? So he, he's, he's one of us, right? Like fully man. Okay. Right? All right. And so he's sad about death, right? He's sad because his friend's dead. Mm-hmm. He's sad because everyone else is mourning his friend's death, right? Mm-hmm. But the cool part is there's more to the story, Right. Jesus has him roll away the stone, mm-hmm. even though, like, he's going to stink. He's like, do it anyway. And then he calls Lazarus out of the tomb, and out he comes, grave clothes and, you know, all. Like, mm-hmm. So he was sad about death, but that's just not where it ended, right? That it ends, the story ends with life. Jesus overcomes the death. And uh, well, that didn't that also kind of lead to Jesus' death because it, everyone saw that, and it kind of sped things up leading up to Jesus' death because— uh, more people were amped up about that, and uh, yeah, oh yeah, because the, they're like, well, you, you can explain away a lot of stuff, but a, a guy who should be rotting in a tomb coming out alive, you can't, you know, that has to be the Son of God. No one else could do that, so we better kill this guy, right? And then, and then Jesus wound up then defeating death by himself dying and rising to life again. Yeah. All right. There is our super <laughs> attention deficit uh, Bible study. Not only one verse, but. The shortest verse in the Bible. That's right. All right, that brings us to Confound the Clerics. Peter, play the intro. Confound the Clerics. All right, guys, this week we have a question from a guy named Chris. He says, hey, guys, I enjoyed listening to your podcast. I grew up in a Lutheran church, not the uh, LCMS, uh, and my church is now non-denominational. Anyway, my reason for contacting you is more for clarification. Somewhere in the haiku episode, you were idly chatting about changes, and you short of, sort of flippantly said something about using grape juice for communion. What is the stance of the LCMS on using grape juice for communion? All the churches I've been a part of have offered both, so I'm curious of your stance, because of the way you just sort of tossed it out there. <laughs> on another note, how long before you drink a mead during the episode? Thanks for your time. So, uh, we'll start with you, Vicar. What do you think about that? The question. Right. So wine versus grape juice kind of thing. Uh, a big thing is we, you know, use the Lord's example, what he did as sort of, you know, foundational for what we do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the Lord used wine. Um, grape juice wasn't a thing up until, what, the 1800s or something? Right. Right. And so since the Lord used wine and bread in the Lord's Supper, um, you know, we... We do it according to as Christ instituted it. And then there are examples in the Bible, too, um, where um, one example is from uh, 1 Corinthians, where it talks about uh, people actually were getting drunk. They were drinking so much of the communion wine, which shows it was actual wine. Now, um, one, one thing you, you realize is, well, that's, we, need, we do it as Jesus instituted it. Mm-hmm. He instituted it with wine. And you might think, well, well um, certainly it, it doesn't really matter that much. But really, if you think about it in the Old Testament, for example, when, uh, when uh, God gave instructions on the tabernacle or the temple, because that was where his presence was found. Mm-hmm. Vicar, was, uh, was God pretty clear on how he wanted it when it came to how he was dwelling among his people? Oh, man, excessively so. There's, there's yeah, lots. For example, do you have any examples? Well, like, so the description of the tabernacles, it describes the the decorations, the colors of the fabric that they used, the ornamentation, the, the all the steps for the specific sacrifices. And so so God was very, very... Um, detail-oriented, detail-oriented might say? when it came to how he wanted his presence given. So, and, and so when, I think it makes a difference, too, with this question, is if you believe that it is the real presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
then uh, uh, that's going to matter. You want to do it as Christ instituted, yeah. Because uh, because for example, what we talked about in the temple, the tabernacle, he was very clear on how he wanted his temple to be done, his tabernacle to be done. He was very clear when he gave that to Moses. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and like you say, I mean, he's certainly powerful enough to do whatever he wants. But when he's promised to do certain things, then we're kind of foolish if we look outside those promises, right? And I would say, if you if you believe that it was just a meal of remembrance, where you know it's not really the the real presence, then I would say it really wouldn't matter. Yeah, I mean, I can remember Jesus doing how, all kinds of different right, things. Right, right. You could do all sorts of things. Like, this is how I'm going to remember him today, or this is how I'm going to remember it. But that's but if you believe that this is the real presence, that Jesus is coming to you in body and blood for the forgiveness of your sins, you want to do it as he instituted it. Yeah. And that's what we believe. And so so whether it's grape juice and wine to us, it does matter. Mm-hmm. Especially um, when Jesus instituted, he was celebrating the Passover meal. And it was... They used wine. Wine. Now... Uh, you know, people, I think one reason why people are hesitant to use wine is because some people have trouble with it. Yeah, sometimes you even know. allergies to alcohol. Right, and, and, and uh, you know, there are ways around that, you know, whether you can even just dip it in the wine, mm-hmm. you know, or if even if you take the, the common cup, you know, you don't, you don't really have to get that much wine actual in your mouth, yeah. you know. So so there are there are ways around it, but... but um, you know, we believe. Is it okay to is it okay to water it down? Um, some people water it down, and you know, I'm not real strong on that, but you know, because I prefer the wine as Christ instituted it. But uh, um, I, I do think that uh, that uh, you know, it's important to use wine. All right. Well, that is our episode today, and uh, thank you for sticking to us. Our one and a half pastors. That's right. And uh, <laughs> thank you all. All right. Well, here are our sticky notes. Hey, Pastor, but what about that uh, that one time? So uh, grab your beverage and uh, join us on this journey. Um, and uh, and let's begin with the top 12. Vicar, would you like to say it? Uh-oh, Peter, right. pay the intro. Peter, aw. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. (laughs) What about this time? All right. All right. Welcome to Clerical Errors. Clerical Errors. Welcome to Clerical Errors. I'm Vicar Baldwin. Vicar, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hey, Pastor. Um, Are you you recording? What's going on? I didn't think so. Are are these on? They're on. Oh. All right. (laughs) Peter, play the intro. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. (laughs) Peter, you didn't think any of this was funny? I don't hear you laughing. I wanted to cut that out. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Yeah, you probably should have. Uh, What about this? This life hack, I want you to stay with me. This is entitled, Don't Do It. I want you to think of something that you've been thinking about doing, but you shouldn't. This is what you do. You don't do that. Well, when you put it like that, I mean... Sometimes it's helpful, too, if you say it out loud. Like, you know, sometimes you hear something on the news or someone... You know, maybe I shouldn't rob a Taco Bell wearing a diaper. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, so I, <laughs> if, if he would have taken the advice of just saying it out loud or just saying, okay, you know, I probably shouldn't wear a diaper and rob a Taco Bell. <laughs> All right. All right. You, you know, I think uh, I think if you're at a certain point when you're when you're robbing a Taco Bell with a diaper on, you're probably like five or six say it out louds deep, right? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. The first thing, well, you know, with a diaper, he, he could, you know, maybe he has some medical issue. Yeah. Well, yeah. it takes so much yeah. effort to get to the bathroom every time I have to use the bathroom. Well, what if you get nervous while you're robbing the Taco Bell, right? You can't run to the right. restroom with a gun. And, and mm-hmm. you don't want to... What the police think? You yeah. Don't, you don't want to leave any DNA samples behind. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. That's enough nonsense. Thank you for listening. I'm Berg. I'm Baldwin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bullhagen. I'm Baldwin. This has been Clerical Errors. See ya.
Thank you for joining us. This podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever else you get your podcasts. If you enjoy the show, please support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash clerical heirs podcast. Money we receive is invested back into the podcast and the surplus donated to the Lutheran Heritage Foundation. Questions, thoughts, concerns? You can contact us on Facebook at facebook.com slash clerical heirs podcast, on Twitter at clerical heirs P for podcasts, or email us at feedback at clericalheirs.org. There you can also find links to the things we talked about. Thanks for listening to Clerical Heirs. See you next time.